and a very warm welcome to the Dorchester Team Service Day. It's so lovely to see so many different faces from right across the Dorchester team um, on this beautiful um, sunny morning. If you don't have one already, do please grab a candle if you have one to hand, um, because we're going to um, be lighting a candle in our prayer time later. Thank you. So today's service is on a theme of comfort and joy. Um, and I hope you all um, find some comfort and joy in what we're offering this morning. So our prayers are for all of those who are struggling at this time, especially those who are suffering with COVID and other illnesses. And we pray that the Lord will make his presence known to them and that they will know comfort and joy in his love for them. Everything you need to know is on the service sheet um, and I do hope you've got access to one of those. Please will you join in at home with everything that is in bold. Today we remember Jesus and the comfort and joy that he brings. Jesus is our King. And I have a candle here which I'm going to light. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is our way. With Jesus, even dark places are light. Jesus is the truth. In Jesus, we shall live forever. Jesus is our life. We move to a time of confession now. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your son, our saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find, king, to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory hidden through past ages, and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. John will now share a video about some of the things that bring us comfort and joy. Thank you, John. How lovely to see you and thank you so much for contributing to our service this morning. Um, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about what brings you comfort and joy. Good morning Teresa and I think one of the things that brings me comfort and joy obviously is being able to be in touch with friends 
And when we're at home, we have each other. And of course, we have two very important furry friends who regard us as a combination of pets and or slaves or well, <laughs> full time both. Lockdown means so many different things to each of us. And sometimes it's the usual schedule because people are working and then it's an excuse to enjoy a little free time with a book one's wanted to read. And for some people, I know because I have had friends uh, say to me, it's so terrifying, this loneliness. But we do get comfort and joy from other people and especially our little furries. Some of us have young and very young children, disabled, slightly frail family, and they have their continued routines. It's no different for them. And then, of course, we have these slave drivers who are delighted to have more time to supervise us. And, you know, they, they make us come and play with them, which is wonderful. And Tiger and Quincy awake or asleep, present or busy with their own agendas, keep a check on us. Got a few pictures to show you, just to give you a little glimpse of our everyday life here. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. So we're thinking about comfort and joy um, this week. So how has, how has your baking brought you comfort and joy, first of all? Well, for one thing, it's probably it's a way of giving to others, um, especially when the family was at home. Um, I enjoy cooking because it, it brings pleasure to others. Uh, and it, and I just I just like the whole experience of being able to give in a in a practical way, and um, and I just and it just it's a time when I can lock I can just block off and do it. So yes, so Thank that's you. how. Yeah, so it's brought a lot of comfort and joy to others as well. Yes, I think so. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And um, I was thinking. Bread, particularly, obviously features very prominently in our faith, the, the Eucharist, the story of manna in the Old Testament. So would you say that baking um, bread is also linked to your spirituality? Well, yes, I do. And especially it came really prevalent during the first lockdown. And I realised, as so someone who takes communion sometimes twice a week, that I was not going to be able to take communion. Though in the past, I'd probably only taken it once a month, but it has become very important to me. And I wondered how I would actually take virtual communion. But I was doing Stephen's Cross um, um, Bible study after Easter and in it it's on the Lord's Prayer it was on the Lord's Prayer and in it he says that when we take we ask for our daily bread we don't only mean substance for our body we mean the daily bread which is Christ which is the bread of life and I have found great solace in that and when I look at my bread and eat my bread now I often think that I'm not only in fed, fed physically but spiritually as well. Thank you so much. That, I think that's going to be really helpful for people today. It's certainly helpful for me. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us, Gloria. Hope you have bye, a good day. Bye. 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 So hello everybody, here we are at Drayton St Leonard Churchyard um, and it's a lovely day, thank goodness. Um, you may hear some helicopters but that's all to the good. And I'm here with Charles, hello Charles. Hi Who, Teresa. Hello and Charles you volunteer your time to look after the churchyard here for us. Um, 
I wonder if you could tell everyone at home what it is about helping out in the churchyard that brings you such comfort and joy. Oh, it, uh, there's a lot of reasons, really, Teresa. Um, uh, I, I like to feel I'm being a bit useful. That's uh, because, like, like many retired people, you, you think you might be able to do a bit in, in return for all, all that's uh, been done for you. And um, I like being outside. I enjoy gardening. I enjoy plants. And God's Acre is right opposite my, my front window. So, and, and it's an ideal place for doing what you can for nature close, you know, close and in, in the village. And um, the thing about churchyards is they've had little, they've had little input of fertilizer. So although the grass seems to grow strongly here, uh, the, the, I, we, can, we can see and enjoy a lot of the wildflowers that come up through it because there isn't too much competition. So that's very satisfying to see. So I enjoy seeing that going on. And I, I like to exercise a bit and I don't want to go to the gym. <laughs> so what could be better than some... Um, uh, than being outside, uh, gardening, being useful, and um, uh, well, making it look nice. And there is the uh, the fact that we are doing something for wildlife, and, and certainly a lot needs to be done. Um, we're lucky here. There's 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 trees, there's verges, there's, as well as the churchyard, and there's some king gardeners. So we we've got we've got a we want to make the most of it. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Jean. Hello, Sorrow. Greetings from... Nice to see you. <laughs> um, how are you, today? Oh, I'm, I'm better today, I think, because the sun's out and it's a nicer feeling outside. So we're going to talk a bit about your craft and your painting that you do. Um, would you mind telling us a bit about it to start with and maybe showing us some of your work? Yes, um, I've been involved in a little painting group up here for all oh, many years where a few of us get together. Uh, no tuition, we just do our own thing. But it's been a year since I last did anything. Um, and I found that uh, I seem to have lost my way a little bit. So I went in and I've been doing adult colouring. And I love it because you can use all the bright colours, a bit of glitz and things. Um, and you can just sit down with a tray with some felt tips. You don't have to make a big space for doing it. So it's easier because my house is very full. And in sort of October, November, and December, I've been doing stitch cards for Christmas to send to special friends and I do miss my craft which we used to have as well at the church. So that's been giving me pleasure. Lovely. And um, please can we can we see some examples? Yes, I will pass it over to Peter. So that's that's a tiger. That's the first one of the first ones I did. Oh. That's Broadway in Gloucestershire. Beautiful. And this is one I did with Rebecca Hind at Dorchester a few years ago. That's beautiful, thank you. And this is what I mean about colourful. Yeah. And I think there's another one. That's lovely. Oh yeah, here we are. It's a calendar from two years ago. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. But the things that could be most pleasure. Here's the Christmas cards that I like doing. So that stitch card. So do you so sew on the card? Is that? Yes. You prick a lot of holes, and this is this is the favourite one, Mr. Robin. Oh, that's great! I like that one. And I'll show you the back. You might be able to see. 
little tiny holes. Uh, that's the back of it. Mm -hmm. And you put the threads through to the design they tell you. And I've done some little colouring cards to say thank you for my presents and put them in with my thank you cards. These came from Gloria. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. They've got little, little sayings on them. And this is a nice one. Oops. But I've had to have a steadier hand. They're very small. Yeah. But, oh, there's the other one. I knew there was a nice, really nice, pretty one. Oh, yeah, that's really detailed. It is, isn't it? I've had to find some fine pens. Yeah. And sit still. <laughs> um, but it's, I like doing the cards and I shall, next month I've got three birthday cards to make. So I should do more stitch cards. I like that, but I do miss the craft meetings. We used to try new things at it. But so your your cards and your art, they bring you Compton Joy, but they also bring Compton Joy to other people, would you say? Yes, because I get nice thank yous when I've done them. And if they're the special friends, it's nice that they, they like them too. And I know one of my friends, she, she's got a row of them in her house that I've sent her over the past. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. So it's kind it's of nice a mutual blessing, thing. I guess. Yeah. 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 And some of them link, I suppose, to your faith because some of them have kind of Bible verses on and, and things like that. That was Gloria. She gave me those because I told her I lost my way with painting. She saw these and her, I used to do painting with her husband, with John. He used to belong to our class. And we used to, in fact, she gave me a lot of his old paints and bits and pieces. It was lovely. I'll get back there one day, I think. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Jean. Again, apologies for all the technological difficulties in showing that video. We'll try and make sure the other video is in the service run a bit more smoothly. But now I think I hand over to David for our first reading. This is a reading from the first book of Samuel. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, David. So we now have uh, the set psalm to share with you. This is Psalm 139. Um, Lord, you have searched me and known you. A lot of people will identify this as their favourite psalm because of the words of comfort that it brings of God's presence in our lives. Unfortunately, I was unable to record or video David and Jill um, doing this psalm for us. So I've got an alternative version to share with you. Um, I'm just going to pop the um, chorus 
in the chat. So if you fancy joining in with the chorus, it's there in the chat now. So if you fancy joining in with the chorus as you listen to this video, please do so at home. Um, and the psalm starts with the chorus. So I'm going to attempt, fingers crossed everybody, that we don't have any more mishaps. I'm going to attempt to share the video with you now. Yahweh, I know you are near, standing always at my side. You guard me from the fall, and you lead me in ways everlasting. Lord, you have searched my heart, and you know when I sit and when I stand. Your hand is upon me, protecting me from death, keeping me from Yahweh, I know you are near, standing always at my side. You guard me from the fool, and you lead me in ways everlasting. If I climb to the heavens, you are there. If I fly to the sunrise, or stale beneath the sea, still I find you there. Yahweh, I know. You guard me from the fall, and you lead me in ways everlasting. You know my heart and its ways. You who formed me before I was born, in the secret of darkness, before I saw the sun, in my mother's womb, Yahweh, I know you are near, standing always at my side. You guard me from the fall, and you lead me in ways everlasting. Marvelous to me are your works. How profound are your thoughts, O oh my Lord! Even if I could count them, they number as the stars, you would still be there. Yahweh, I know you are near, standing always at my side. You guard me from the fall, and you lead me in ways everlasting. 
I'm now going to hand over to Emily for our second reading. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found what the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you. I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Here ends the gospel reading. May my words give glory to God, creator, redeemer and sustainer. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. God knows us and God sees us. But sometimes it's not easy for us to see God. When God calls Samuel, Samuel is confused. He doesn't realize that it's God who is calling him. But God is calling us. God sees Nathaniel sitting under the fig tree and he calls him to join the great adventure of following Jesus. And God sees us this morning in our living rooms or in our offices with family or alone. God sees us and God calls us today. God sees us get up, bake bread, feed our pets, do craft activities and work in the garden. God sees all the things we do and he loves us beyond measure. God sees us, God loves us, and God calls us. Sometimes that calling is dramatic and life-changing, a major change of direction or a big adventure. But most days, it's just the call to keep going. Keep living lives of abundant love and hope safe in the knowledge that you are perfectly known and infinitely loved by your creator. Do the small things each day that bring you comfort and joy and do them with a heart overflowing with thankfulness as a praise offering to God. And think about how you can bring comfort and joy to others, how your unique gifts can be a blessing to other people and to the world. Keep doing the small things that bring comfort and joy to others. They matter. Don't stop. Don't give up. You, in your complexity, your vulnerability, your uniqueness, you are a blessing to this world. Keep living out that calling in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sorrel. Thank you so much for those words. So let's now affirm our faith in our God, in whom we find comfort and joy. So I ask, do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you 
believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again. I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I'll hand over to Sorrel, who's going to lead us in prayer. We're going to try something a bit different for our prayer time today. If you have a candle to hand, um, would you please light it now to help us focus on our prayer time? I know um, from a lot of people who I've spoken to across the team and, and our wider friends and family, um, there are a lot, there's a lot of anxiety and worry about at the moment. There's a lot of people we know who are ill um, and who are working in hospitals. Um, so I thought what we'd try today is some intercessory prayer where if there's somebody on your heart who would, you would like to pray for, if you'd please type their name into the chat, take your time um, and type their name and I'll read out those names and we'll all pray for those people together. I'm going to start um, by praying for my uncle Jim um, who works in the intensive care unit at the hospital in, in Portsmouth uh, where they're very busy at the moment. We lift up to you, God, Roy and his family, because their son, Robert, has died tragically. We lift up Nike, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. We lift up Leanne and everyone in hospital um, who doesn't have COVID, but who needs hospital care. We pray for Reese and Ceres, who are struggling with anxiety and sleeplessness. We pray for Sophie, for Ziggy, whose stem cell replacement operation has been postponed. We pray for Sarah McDowell working at the Royal Berkshire Hospital. Give thanks for those who work in shops, everyone who keeps us fed and, and lift those before you. Pray for Father Philip. Give a couple of more minutes for anyone else's prayers. We lift up to you teachers. Um, the Watkins cousin, Alan, who's recovering from major surgery. Or Caroline's auntie Hazel, recovering from COVID in Liverpool. For Jane and Alice and all those working to keep our hospitals running. For people worried because they haven't yet received the vaccine. Catherine's dad and all those who are living alone and are far from family.
for all families that are separated and people who are isolated by the current lockdown. And in the silence of our own hearts, we lift up all those prayers that are known to us and to God. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. For Greg and all young doctors who are struggling with the intensity of work in ICU and coping with the grief of relatives. and for all those who are researching vaccines um, and researching the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please continue um, to let us know your prayer requests throughout this week. Um, and we draw our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to sing our final hymn now. Um, we're still in Epiphany season, um, and this hymn reminds us about those words, comfort and joy, which we're thinking about today. Um, so our final hymn, hopefully, I, I have to tell you, technology is something that does not bring me any comfort and joy ever. But if, um, if this video works for us, we will sing our final hymn, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen.
Can I add my thanks to Sorrel and to everyone who's taken part in the service today. And can we say an especial thank you to all our uh, folk who support our technology, to all of those who've created things uh, technologically wise for the service, to Jennifer for those wonderful slides, um, and especially to Sue and to Nick and to John who've helped and supported the technology. We're all learning and we all make mistakes and um, it's still worship for our Lord and is it always acceptable in his sight. So can I finish the service offering you God's blessing? Let us pray. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in your hearts and fill your lives with his joy and with his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us now and always. Amen. So I think Sue's now going to uh, put us all into coffee groups. Do go and grab yourselves a coffee if you can.